The Cardio Mobile 6L EKG recording device. Is this worth your money? My name is Dr. Munim and here's my review of the Cardio Mobile 6L. Well, the answer is potentially yes. It depends on why you are buying it. Are you using it to screen yourself from heart-related problems? Or are you using it because you actually have symptoms and you need a diagnosis? In this review, let's take a look at what makes this device unique and whether it's right for you. Just a heads up, you'll hear me use the terms ECG and EKG interchangeably. These terms refer to the trace of your heart that this device generates. They are one and the same thing, so different parts of the world refer to the trace in different terms. In the USA, it's more common to use the term EKG. So first off, let's start with the way it actually works. It measures about the size of your palm, and it picks up electrical signals that come off from the heart all across the body. And it does that through three plates, so the two plates at the front here and the one plate at the back. It then sends a high frequency sound transmission to your mobile phone and the mobile phone then picks up the trace of your heart. Um, I have to say I think setting this up has been an absolute breeze and it must be one of the highlights of using this little device. Uh, Cardia have made this device incredibly intuitive to use. Uh, you set up your account, the app asks for your name, your height, your sex and then you're pretty much good to go. Um, you can also connect the app to services like Google Fit where data such as your weight and an automatic calculation of your body mass index are sent. Uh, it also allows you to put in your blood pressure manually. There's a section on the app to type in your medications just as a reminder to yourself. Um, that medication part is a little hit and miss and more on this later. Using the actual device, I think, is where the cardio device shines. It is very clear on what it's trying to help you to achieve, to tell you whether your heart is currently in atrial fibrillation or not. And maybe we should just take a moment to talk about atrial fibrillation because it's this term that's thrown around by so many medical devices companies and it can be a little bit confusing. So let's talk through that. So your heart is the greatest band in the world, and I'll explain exactly why. So the heart is basically composed of four chambers. You have two at the top and two at the bottom. Blood goes into one chamber, into the next chamber, and then out the other way. And it does the same on the other side. And through doing that, the blood is coordinated to move through each of those chambers and it circulates around the body. Now to make sure that that all happens without any problems, we're going to assume that there is a musician in each of those chambers. Now the top two are called atria, hence the term atrial fibrillation. And in the top right, well that's where our conductor is going to be. He's going to tell our band how to play the music, how fast to play, how quickly to play. So he has a really important role and he sits in the top right there. Now, each of these uh, three other band members, they're gonna be playing some awesome music, but they are only gonna be playing awesome music if our conductor is in form. So the musical notes depict the heart beating and rhythm, and actually on the trace, what you see are those spikes, and those spikes correlate to the heart contracting. Now, if that music is playing really well, then that blood will flow all the right way, all around the heart, in exactly the right rate and exactly the right rhythm. So that's harmony in the heart with a great band. But sometimes things can go wrong and the conductor isn't quite on form. He's sending all sorts of signals in atrial fibrillation to our band members and they are really confused. So all of a sudden that music sounds awful. And you can now see just with the lines to give you an idea, the beating is all over the place. There's no rhythm, there's no set rate. And then that can cause blood clots to form. And then those clots can in some cases travel up to the brain and cause a stroke. And that's a basic description of atrial fibrillation. So using your device is as simple as opening up the app, making sure that you selected the six lead ECG or the single lead ECG, putting two fingers, so just here, either side, and holding it really still for 30 seconds for the device to eventually show up the trace. 
Now, the sick cell's claim to fame is that it can take six different leads of the heart. But what does that actually mean? So let's talk through that. So the term lead is actually a slightly confusing one, but for the purposes of this, I want you to understand a lead to be a view. It's a view, a snapshot of one part of the heart itself. And the more different views you get, the more information about the heart you get. So when you have six different views or six different leads, then you get a much greater idea of exactly how the heart is beating than if you were to only look at it from one side. For the six lead ECG, it tells you to touch your knee or your ankle. And I found that a little bit buggy. On my knee, it was rarely picking up the trace properly, but on the ankle, it was totally fine. I wonder whether it's actually related to um, hairy, hairy legs. Um, so if you've got hairy knees and hairy ankles, you might have a problem unless you wax them. So once the trace is done, it will tell you whether you've got a normal rhythm or whether it's atrial fibrillation. You have to interpret the normal rhythm finding with a little bit of caution. Cardia have not explained to what extent the app is accurate with picking up on the very subtle things sometimes that might indicate an abnormal rhythm. So this highlights one of the most important aspects of using devices like this. If you have symptoms, always consult with a trained healthcare professional and do not take this device's findings as gospel. Although the device's focus is on helping to diagnose atrial fibrillation, I think the trace itself can give a trained healthcare professional a lot of useful data, um, a lot more than I had initially realized just by looking at the box on the outside. Cardia does let you send your ECG to a trained physiologist or a physician for a charge, but frankly, if I was worried about some heart-related symptoms, I would want to consult directly with a trained healthcare professional. Um, they might need to examine you, have a listen to your heart, check your vitals. And so many times diagnosing heart-related problems is taking the whole person into account with multiple different factors. It's not just the ECG or EKG alone. A really neat feature of the app is that it allows you to email a password protected version of the ECG to your own physician of choice, which is a nice little touch. There is also a premium service, and this currently allows you to store your data in the cloud. It covers you for replacement devices should you lose it, though not in all countries, and it will trace your medication and also give you a personalized monthly heart health report. One of the least impressive features of the premium package is medication tracking. It felt cumbersome to use, and at the moment, it's really targeted towards the US pharmaceutical market, from what I can tell. For other users around the world, you might find it hard to find your medications on Cardia's list, because the terminology used for medicines is a little bit different. So a good example of this would be in the UK, uh, we might refer to a certain medication as paracetamol or cowpol for children. But actually, in the United States, it's called acetaminophen, and it doesn't matter which way you try to search it on Cardia's list, you don't find the medication that you want. And that's a little bit disappointing, actually. So, is this little device worth your money? Well, as part of routine health screening, I'm not convinced that this device is as much benefit to your health as it advertises to be. Although atrial fibrillation is one of the most common, abnormal, sustained rhythms, its overall prevalence, for example, in England, is only around 2.5%. And in one population study, your lifetime risk was around 26% for men and 23% for women at the age of 40. So in other words, the chances of you not getting this condition far outweigh you ever getting it. So am I going to use this device every single day to check that I've gone into atrial fibrillation? Am I going to use it every single week to check that I'm not in atrial fibrillation if I have no other symptoms? Probably not, and I haven't. To be honest, this device has been collecting dust on my shelf for the last few weeks since I first used it. I may want to check it once every few months, and if that's what you want to use this device for, then maybe it's a useful purchase. But because it's otherwise so limited in the types of abnormal rhythms of the heart that it can pick up at this stage, I'm not terribly convinced that this is a worthwhile purchase um, for atrial fibrillation detection alone.
Where it does come into its own, though, is in people who may be experiencing symptoms suggestive of having abnormal heart rhythms, like atrial fibrillation. And some patients, for example, might get palpitations, the feeling that the heart is uh, running too fast or too slow or skipping a beat. And certain abnormal rhythms can be really difficult to pick up on in an otherwise completely healthy individual because the abnormal beating is so fleeting, it just comes and goes very quickly. So to be able to capture the electrical activity of the heart from six views in a moment is incredibly useful and actually could be really helpful in helping your doctor clinch for diagnosis. To reiterate, if you are getting heart-related symptoms, then your first port of call should be to seek medical attention and not to self-diagnose using this app or this device. Get medical advice and then, under the advice and guidance of a doctor, use this device. Remember, there are a growing number of devices out there now that will measure your heart's electrical activity, but few will measure it from so many different angles so quickly and so easily. And this is where this device shines. Overall, the Cardius XL is a pleasure to use, but for now, only buy it if your doctor needs some data to help with your diagnosis, or you reckon you might only ever use it once in a while to check that the heart isn't ticking erratically. I'm Dr. Munim, and this was my review of the Cardius XL. I really hope you found it useful, and if you did, hit the subscribe button. See you at the next video.